44% of companies using or planning on using AI believe it will result in layoffs. While we are debating whether OpenAI's newest model O3 is artificial general intelligence or not, seems like companies are planning to replace us with it anyways. In this video, we are going to take a real look at what's happening to our future, including the Goldman Sachs prediction of losing 300 million jobs to AI. I don't think our brains can register the number 300 million so well. So, imagine tomorrow all the fast food employees of the United States are laid off. Every McDonald's employee, Subway, Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, Domino's, even unknown brands, all of them. That would seem like a devastating experience. You'd personally know a lot of those people who have lost their jobs. That's only 4.6 million people. The 300 million number is global. And we generously imagined only about 1.5% in the US. The real number should be well over 15, considering the US position in AI. The problem is countries that adapt AI really fast will experience mass layoffs and others who aren't so fast will lose on a global level, which is even worse. You've probably heard that mostly digital or knowledge work is impacted, but in fact, a lot of physical labor is going to be replaced, even not considering humanoid robots. According to an MIT and Boston University report, AI will replace as many as 2 million manufacturing workers by the end of 2025. Most of these workers will be replaced by automated robots that are getting cheaper to design and deploy every year. But an even bigger wave, probably the biggest wave of them all, is coming in 2025. Tesla's newest update to full self-driving, FSD version 13, was a major improvement that shocked a lot of people. We are hearing reports of miles and miles of driving with no interference. And Elon says in just a couple of months, Tesla FSD is reaching human level confidence in driving. This might come as a shock to the public. But internally, Tesla has been tracking the number of human interventions and autopilot crashes. And both of those numbers have been predictably trending down for more than a decade. So they can just follow the curve and predict when it surpasses human level confidence. Which is to say, on average, Tesla cars crash as much as humans would. Tesla is going to surpass that in just a couple of months. Then it will continue the trend and be a hundred times better than humans in just a couple of years. We already have Waymo operating as a self-driving robotaxi, but Tesla's approach is much broader. And when it hits the threshold, it will replace cab drivers, truck drivers, personal drivers, agricultural equipment operators, and anything related to driving. While we don't have the exact numbers, driving is for sure one of the biggest job categories in the world. It might even be illegal to drive as a human in just a decade. I know this sounds unbelievable right now, but when eventually data shows that AI is driving a hundred times safer than humans, we can all agree humans should stop driving on public roads. Finally, all of these estimates ignore the possibility of a fully functioning humanoid robot. In most people's minds, humanoid robots are still a work of fiction, but 2025 is actually the first year we are going to see next-gen humanoids in production. Tesla is adding them to their factories as a test, and they'll ramp up production year over year. Elon predicts we'll eventually have more humanoids than people, probably 4 to 1. A really important sign is the number of serious companies working on their production. Tesla, OpenAI 1X, Agility Robotics, Aprontic, Figure AI, Sanctuary AI, Boston Dynamics, and a bunch more. All super impressive teams with a lot of funding, and most of them plan for production in 2025 or 2026. Administrative jobs are particularly vulnerable. Assistants, data entry, receptionists, etc. They are already being replaced by AI. Goldman Sachs estimates 46% of administrative jobs and 44% of legal professions could be automated. In the most recent episode of Joe Rogan, Mark Zuckerberg stated, In 2025, we at Meta, as well as the other companies that are basically working on this are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. Mm. And once you have that, then in the beginning, it'll be really expensive to run, then you can get it to be more efficient. And then over time, we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and, and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. While I take that with a grain of salt, there is no doubt that 2025 is the year that AI labs will have their first serious replacements for junior to mid-level software engineers. I'm personally in the camp of coding at the core is thinking, and until we have artificial general intelligence, 
there is no way software engineering is fully automated. But at the same time, when O3 is better than 99.9% .9 of people at competitive coding, I can see why teams of 5 to 10 engineers could be reduced to 2 or 3 and retain productivity. Not to mention Google and Anthropic are releasing their thinking models and I think Cloud's thinking version is going to beat all of these benchmarks just based on how good is Cloud Sonnet at coding. Some of you might follow Primogen. As I understand, he's a pretty high skilled software engineer who doesn't like AI coding. Let me hit you with some facts. If AI is a statistical model, which it is, it has this ability to effectively gather some distribution. Now, it may be some alpha beta distribution, it may be some normal distribution, but it's able to say, hey, your words coming in typically produce this output, and so this is the one I'm going to grab for you, okay? Now, here's the problem. The middle input for programming is horse shit code because, unfortunately, the code distribution looks like this, where this is shitty code, which is also most of the code. This is good code, which is also not that much of the code. And I can understand why. At the same time, I've worked as a software engineer for years and have a lot of friends who still work for small and big companies. And I can assure you, customers and project owners don't give the slightest damn about quality of the code. They want something that works, looks good, and they want it fast. That's all. So I wouldn't be surprised if some solo engineer used AI to blurt out just mountains of shitty code and managed to outcompete teams of really good engineers on the market. But software development is just one part of the economy that is going to be impacted with generative AI. So instead of going through all of these professions like designers, 3D artists, music producers, sound effect recorders and more, let's see another research that estimates the impact as a whole. These timelines are ridiculously small. Center for Economic and Policy Research at Washington estimates that by the end of the decade AI and robotics together can replace 47% of jobs in the US. This is the biggest wave of job displacement in history. But is it all bad? If 40% of people lose their jobs, it's basically an apocalypse. AI layoffs aren't like 2008 financial crisis. 2008 layoffs were all bad. Productivity and wages went down and the economy as a whole was held back. For AI though, this is a lot more complicated and we should ask the weird question. Is it good that a lot of people are going to lose their jobs? In the last episode of Joe Rogan, Mark had an interesting and honest perspective on this. Another concern that people have is that it's going to eliminate a lot of jobs. Yeah. You know, what do you think about that? At some point, not too far along uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, like the vast majority of people in society were farmers. And then we turned that into a in, like an industrial process. And now it's like 2% of society are farmers and we get all the food that we need. So my guess is that like the percent of people who will be doing stuff that's like physically required for humanity to survive will get to be smaller and smaller as it has. More people will dedicate themselves to kind of creative and artistic and cultural pursuits. The number of hours in a week that someone will have to work in order to be able to get by will probably continue to shrink. Yet, I think people who are super engaged in what they do are going to be able to work really hard and accomplish way more than they ever could before because they have um, like this unimaginable leverage from, from having a lot more technology. I think the question is what you raised, which is, is this qualitatively a different type of thing that somehow um, obsoletes people? But I, I just think when you're asking that, it's just important to remind ourselves that like, at every step along the way of human progress and technology, people thought that the technology that we were developing was going to obsolete people. So maybe this time it's really different. We could hope AI generates new types of jobs, but if we are being honest, this time is different. AI and robotics are basically replacing humans. And by definition, they are supposed to do whatever humans do even better and cheaper. On a macro level, it's almost certain AI will bring positive advancements, driving progress and efficiency across industries. But on a personal level, it feels like people will be forced to constantly adapt, switching jobs year after year as AI continues to outperform humans in more and more areas, until it eventually does everything better than everyone. Elon Musk envisions a future where we don't just have universal basic income, but universal high income. In this utopian scenario, work as a means of earning money essentially disappears. Setting aside the philosophical debate about meaning and purpose, 
A more immediate and practical question is, how do we share resources then? For example, I might want a yacht. Who wouldn't? But we can't have 9 billion yachts. Jeff Bezos, for example, can justify owning a yacht because he built Amazon, a service that benefits billions. Until now, we've allocated resources based on a rough idea of contribution. It's not perfect, but it provides a framework for a functioning society. Big contribution, big reward. But in a world where no one contributes anything, how do we decide who gets what? Do we revert to power dynamics and status games? The entire system could start to resemble a dysfunctional company or a bloated government where actual work doesn't matter. Instead, politics, relationships and status would determine who gets ahead and who gets left behind. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any positive alternatives to this vision. And that's the ending between now and the point where we have not only fully capable AI and robotics, but also enough of them to replace all human labor, we are stuck in a strange in-between phase. We still need humans to work because there are plenty of things that AI can't do yet. But at the same time, there aren't enough jobs for everyone. I couldn't find any clear theory or plan for how we are supposed to navigate this transitory period. If you've come across any theories or even have your own ideas about how we are going to handle both the transitory period and the so-called utopian future, I'd love to hear them. Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, let YouTube know. My name is Puria. See you in the next one.